Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Parallel C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about debugging data races using Thread Sanitizer. So one of the most difficult tasks that we have when programming is, of course, debugging. Now, this is further compounded, right? The difficulty is, rather, um, when we have parallel applications, right? Suddenly, we don't have to just worry about you know, the actions of a single thread. We now have to worry about the interleaved actions from multiple different threads. And one of the problems we have to worry about are these things called data races. Now, fortunately, there are tools to help us with debugging parallel applications. And one such tool is Thread Sanitizer. So if we go ahead and look at the right hand side of the screen at the uh, you know, Google documentation for uh, you know, Thread Sanitizer for C and C++ programs, we see that Thread Sanitizer is a data race detector and that you know, data races are one of the most common and hardest to debug types of bugs in concurrent systems. And then as far as defining a data race goes, we're talking about when two threads access the same variable concurrently and at least one access is a write. Right. So if two threads are just reading data, everything's perfectly OK. But as soon as we start modifying data and multiple different threads are looking at that same piece of data, that's when we can start running into problems here. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of a program that has a data race and then see how we can detect it using thread sanitizer. So we'll go ahead and open up this data race.cpp and we have a pretty familiar and simple program here. So Instead of our main function, we're just going to do some increments across some different threads here. So we're going to do two to the 20 total increments across eight threads, and we'll just divide the work evenly across all the threads. So each thread will run uh, increments per thread iterations of some loop. Now, what we're going to be incrementing is just a simple integer here, right? And I've just made it volatile so it doesn't get optimized away. So down here, right, we have our work function that, you know, each of our, um, uh, each of our threads is going to run here. So in each iteration of this loop, right, for increments per thread iterations, we're going to do a single increment here, right? And because it's volatile, we'll make sure to get, you know, one eighth of these two to the 20 increments per thread. Okay, now the rest of our code is pretty simple. We just spawn our threads, right, using in placeback, right, into our vector of threads. Then we join our threads, so we wait for our threads to complete. And then we make sure that we got the right answer here with an assert, right? So we're making sure that sync, right, this volatile int here, is equal to the number of increments, right? Those two numbers should be equal. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we run this application. So first, we'll, of course, we'll compile it um, with just a couple flags here. So O2 optimization, linking against libp threads since we're using threads, and then C++20 because we're specifically using J threads. Okay, so we have our executable. Let's go ahead and run our program. And somewhat unsurprisingly, right, we see that our assertion fails, right? So we can run this multiple times. And we see that each time we seem to be failing the same assertion. So sync is not equal to the to num increments here. Something is going wrong with our increments. Now, this is this can be an incredibly difficult kind of bug to debug here, right? Because our program didn't crash, we just got the incorrect answer, right? When we're checking our answers at the very end. Sometimes a crash can even be helpful because it tells us exactly where our code failed, right? But in this case, we're failing at the very end of our program when we're doing our final check, right, of our result here. So let's go ahead and see how we can debug this data race, right, using Thread Sanitizer. So if we go ahead and scroll down a little bit, we, we see a little bit on the usage of Thread Sanitizer. And you can see that we can simply compile our program using F Sanitize equals thread here with GCC. And, you know, we can still have optimizations like O2, and we can use, th use things like dash G so that we get things like file names and line numbers in our warning messages. So let's go ahead and recompile our program with Thread Sanitizer. So we'll go ahead and recompile our code, except at the very end, right, let's go ahead and add that dash G and dash F sanitize is equal to thread here. Okay, so we compiled our program here, and now we can go ahead and run it. And you can see that we no longer just get, you know, this final um, assert at the very end of execution, we get some printouts from Thread Sanitizer. And specifically, it tells us that we have a data race here. So we'll go ahead and make the screen a little bit bigger here so we can fit it all in one line. So you can see that, you know, Thread Sanitizer detected a data race here inside of our process. And you can see that we had a read of size four at some address by T2. And there was a previous write of size four to the same address here, 
right? This hex 7FF D7B13728 by T1. And it even gives us a little bit of history of how we got to that specific uh, line that was doing that read and the write. So you can see here, this most recent one here, right? It's coming from, you know, our datarace.cpp file at line 20 here. And likewise, our write down here is at the exact same spot here. And you can see, you know, if we go ahead and scroll down, it tells us the history of how these threads were created. And then there's even a summary. So, you know, thread sanitizer detected a data race, you know, in this file at this line number inside of this call operator. So that call operator is just our Lambda that we're running inside of our thread. Okay, so let's go ahead and reopen up our code here, right? This uh, data race.cpp. And let's see what's at line 20. And very, uh, unsurprisingly, right, what's at line 20 is our increment here, right? So this is where we have our data race. We're not protecting this increment whatsoever. So we can have multiple threads kind of clobbering each other's rights in this circumstance. So we want to protect this with some using, you know, either an atomic for sync or protect it with some kind of lock. So let's go ahead and do that and, and, and fix our issue here. So we can go ahead and just do something like include, include mutex. Then, you know, down here inside of our code, we can create a mutex M that we'll use to protect our shared you know, read and write here. So before we do anything, before we modify sync or even read it, what we're going to do is lock our mutex. So we'll just use a std lock guard for type std mutex. We'll call it LG and it will take control of our mutex. So every iteration of this loop, it'll grab the lock then we can do our increment. And then when it goes out of scope, right, in each iteration of the loop, it'll release the lock. So let's go ahead and save this and we can recompile our application and we can still recompile it using thread sanitizer just to prove that we got rid of this data race. So we recompiled our code. We can run zero data race again. And then sure enough, our code completes successfully and thread sanitizer no longer complains about a data race, right? We fixed our bug. Okay. So that's a little bit on how we can use uh, things like Thread Sanitizer for debugging data races in our parallel applications, right? One of the benefits of using something like Thread Sanitizer is that compared to, you know, other types of, you know, parallel, you know, debugging strategies, Thread Sanitizer is relatively inexpensive, right? And it can be a great way to find uh, bugs like this, right? Data races in C++, 11 and beyond um, are undefined behavior. So they're things that we want to avoid in our programs. Now, that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. Um, as always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. Um, but as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.